Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It's lovely to see you all here today. Thank you so much for coming out. My name is Kylie Walsh. I'm the Executive Manager of Community Arts and Culture, and I'm absolutely honoured to be here tonight. Welcome to the Australia Day Awards Ceremony. And we're here to acknowledge our very own residents who have made outstanding contributions. And I think by the end of the night, you'll agree with me that it's uh, very impressive, all of the work that all of you have done. I've got a few housekeeping things to go through, just to get them out of the way at the beginning of the night. So if you need to go to the amenities, straight outside to the right. In case of an emergency, please follow staff. Uh, we will be meeting outside at Lionel Watts, around the back, but please stay seated until staff issue, issue you out, if need be, because we might not go out that way. We might have to go out that way. Um, just letting you know that you've all got a program there, and the award winners will be announced in that order. So you can get yourself prepared knowing when you're coming up and when you're not coming up. So if you're near the end of the, of the program, sit back and relax for a while. Um, if you're near the beginning, you'll be called up pretty soon. Just wanted to let you know that also this ceremony is being recorded and it will be broadcast on our website. It's not being live streamed. We are recording it and we'll put it up in due course. So you can then share it with all your family and friends and everyone you know. So I'd also like to thank all of you for being very COVID safe tonight. It's difficult times. I want to thank you for wearing your masks when you're not eating and drinking. And thank you for sitting separately from other household groups. So we're going to do everything we can to keep everyone as safe as possible tonight. And thank you all the uh, award recipients for sitting on the aisles or near the aisles. So it's an easy, easy way up. And when it's time for the awards, I will also give you some instructions about where to go and how, how to actually come up on stage to receive your awards. So it should be no surprises for anybody. So we, let's get started with an acknowledgement of country. I'd like to invite Karen Smith from the Aboriginal Heritage Office. Thank you, Karen. water and masks and all of that paraphernalia to put to the side. Well, I, I want to, to come here tonight to see you all and I think uh, this day or the day that's coming up is uh, very important for Aboriginal people as we know that changed our lives forever. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of history that the English had already been in Australia for really since the 17th of January, where the first um, transports arrived in uh, Gaimai country, Botany Bay, uh, followed on the 18th by the supply, and then the other members of the fleet started to arrive the day after and the day after. And of course, the 26th of January marks uh, the taking of the land um, when the flag won, was flown and the cannons were fired, all the volleys of shots were done. So it's important, I think, to remember that Aboriginal people start in January, really start thinking about this and how the impacts this has had on their lives and ongoing into the future. We, um, we are very, very lucky finally to have the, uh, the Aboriginal flag back in our hands. Um, it got to the stage where Aboriginal people could not afford the copyright costs to have the flag printed on anything. We had to take it off our uniforms um, and we weren't able to afford that cost of having that um, flag printed. And you possibly none of you realise that the flag was actually taken out of Aboriginal hands, even though it's an Aboriginal flag. And Uncle Harold Thomas actually designed the flag and it has important symbols in it. If we look at it, we can see that black, of course, is the spirit of the people. The people are, and they are standing on the land. And that is also a spiritual 
representation of the land. The land represents the red ochre that we paint our bodies with, which is um, a spiritual painting. It represents the connection to country that we have, that deep connection to everything around us, the birds, the animals, everything in our country was part of our lives. And this is something that was so important that our spirituality also came from the land and everything around us. And of course, yellow is the sun and Aboriginal people knew that the sun gave everything life and it gave, made food grow, it kept us warm, it propagated everything around us and was part of our everyday lives. So the flag, he designed the flag around the, these principles. So to lose the flag was such um, an intense thing, very sad thing for me. I remember being um, so upset at that time. And then only, I think it was yesterday or the day before, it was handed back and is now free of copyright so that we can now use this flag on, on our Aboriginal products. And, and of course, we may one day, if we can afford some new uniforms, be able to put this flag back on our uniforms. Um, I wanted to thank all the people that have worked in their community, supporting their community, and this is such an important thing that we look after each other, that we care for each other, that we help each other move forward. We help our community move forward. We, this was something that always happened in Aboriginal culture. The community, the group of people that we cared for each other as just as we cared for the land. And I know that here I'm speaking to the converted because this is something that you have all been doing in your communities and for other people and around other people, helping them progress and become more than they possibly could even see for themselves. We are in saltwater country and that's not hard to miss when we see the sea as we move around here all the time. It was a land of beautiful waterfalls, rainforest gullies, and a very bountiful land. The fishing happens seasonally because of course we rely on that great current that comes down um, with Nemo, if any of you know Nemo, <laughs> You would know that current that comes down, that great eastern current. And this brings a great fishing season. So the people that lived on this country in the manly, broader area, they were the Gallimagal. When you move up towards Pitwater area, you have the Garrigal. And as you uh, cross over the Roseville Bridge, you're looking, you're getting closer to the Durrett Murrigal. And of course, if you move out west, you're getting close to the Walla Medigal. So there were probably more clans in this area. Such a good area to live in, you'd have to agree, and has such great food, but Unfortunately, with the changes that happened in history, we do not know what those clans were. Of course, language was forbidden to be spoken. So all of these stories, the stories of our totems, the stories of our song lines were not spoken of because the language was taken from us. So I'd like you to remember, as we approach this very serious day of Australia Day, to remember these proud, strong, spiritual people that walked this land and think of them as you pass through these days 
And today I would like to welcome you on behalf of all, all my ancestors and the ancestors and the elders that walked this country. So welcome and enjoy your awards. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. We will be doing a bit of wiping, making sure that we're a very COVID safe event. So it now gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the Mayor of the Northern Beaches, Councillor Michael Regan. Thank you, Kylie. And can I say on behalf of the Northern Beaches Council, can I welcome you all here to the 2022 Australia Day Awards Ceremony. Um, can I also, just before to get formalities over and done with, thank our musician tonight, Karen Jay, um, and thank our photographer who is up the back there. So thank you for joining us tonight. Can I, can I acknowledge our traditional custodians of the lands and of elders past and present on which we do today celebrate, and any other Aboriginal people here, um, such as Karen, and I'd like to express my gratitude that we share this land uh, together and, and my sorrow for the cost of that sharing. It, it, I do hope that in the spirit of reconciliation that we can move forward to a place of justice, healing and partnership as we walk gently on this land. And, and I ask that, and, and listening to those stories, and I don't know if anyone heard 702 this morning, uh, there was a great conversation about how um, the Aboriginals record, recorded the history of Captain Cook coming um, to these lands and how Captain Cook himself recorded the, the day they landed here and two very different accounts but two very factual, um, two very interesting sides of what transpired on that day and, and the Aboriginal people spoke about um, put, how they put the fires up and lit the fires and the smoke signals to, to forewarn other Aboriginal communities uh, on the coast and, and, be, and beyond and talked about the song and, and of an impending invasion, essentially, and what the um, and how the English, you know, observed what they were doing, and it's two very real accounts. And it, what struck me was that we continually have this conversation on this particular week every year. Why aren't we having this conversation all year until we resolve it? Until we get to the point where we actually have an adult conversation? We've got great political leaders in the room here, and state and federal. We have some great councillors down here who I'll introduce in a second. Why aren't we having that conversation? And, and um, if the Aboriginal people are tired about talking about the trauma that was that particular day, then surely we're all big enough and old enough and ugly enough to have that conversation through the whole year rather than just talking about it on Australia Day in the week. So I guess that's my challenge to all of you and to all of our political leaders that we do actually have that conversation and um, Karen and her Aboriginal friends and family can... Um, you know, be respectful and, 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 and we can have that adult conversation, I guess, and we can move forward. So on that, um, I just want to acknowledge and welcome my fellow councillors here tonight. We have Councillor Michael Gensher, Councillor Sarah Grattan, Councillor Sue Hines, Councillor Jose Manano Perez, Councillor Ruth Robins and Councillor David uh, Walton. Welcome, councillors, and thank you for joining us tonight. I mentioned our exceptional political leaders here, and we have three of them in the room tonight. We have um, Ms Sally Stegall, our federal member for Warringah. Welcome, Zali. We have the Honourable Rob Stokes, the um, state member for Pittwater, Minister for Cities and Minister for Active Transport, and he is one heck of an active human, as is Zali. Um, and we have Jonathan O'Day, Speaker of the House, who's also very active and is probably the... Um, the, the top-ranked state politician, really, aren't you, Jonathan? You're the, the boss of the Premier and the boss of the Parliament, so... Um, and you're also the member here in Davidson, where we are here tonight in Glen Street. So welcome, all of you. <laughs> Sitting down the front, and thankfully you don't have to put up with his face on stage, representing the Honourable Brad Hazard is Toby um, Williams. Welcome, Tobes. Always good to see you here, mate. Welcome. Thank you for your service. Um, but... More important, we have, a, uh, we have some, a very special guest here tonight also, which is last year's Young Citizen of the Year. Uh, we have Stephanie Evans, um, who you'll hear an address from shortly. So welcome, Stephanie, wherever thou art. Well, I can't see you in the audience, but there you go. Um, tonight, we're going to be presenting uh, 19 awards across six categories, and as 
Kylie said, there's some extraordinary stories there and some extraordinary people in this room doing amazing things. And I know those who nominated know that and appreciate that. And if it wasn't um, a COVID safe event, we could, um, we could have more people here celebrating and, and appreciating everything that you've given. And, and we'll get to that soon. But tonight, those categories include Citizen of the Year, Senior Citizen of the Year, Young Citizen of the Year, Sports Person of the Year, Community Event of the Year, and 14 very outstanding Community Service Awards. Now, each award recipient um, was selected from a very large number of outstanding nominations by an independent panel of five people who have expertise in community services on the Northern Beaches. Um, we have two of those five members here tonight. Um, we have Julie Williams and Tamsin Lee. So welcome to all of you. Um, we have apologies from the other members, which was Evelyn Shervington, Dan Giles and David Hope, but thank you very much for those contributions because you'll be watching this online, of course, later on, so thank you for your contributions. Um, the judges uh, had the very rewarding but difficult task of assessing each of these nominations. Uh, those chosen were considered exceptional and very worthy of this rec recognition. So a very huge welcome to our very special guests tonight and our award recipients. And a final welcome to everyone else here who tonight, who is here tonight rather, those who nominated the award recipients, thank you for taking the time to do this. It is a big deal. We know it's a big deal. We love paperwork in bureaucracies and councils and state governments, but um, thank you so much. It's a, it's a big deal. And to your family and friends, thank you for being here to celebrate that with your loved ones and uh, recognise their extraordinary and amazing efforts. So thank you, because it is a very humbling and extraordinary privilege to be here to honour the award recipients um, as myself and council and our MPs will tell you. Now, Australia Day is, as mentioned before, about acknowledging our nation's past, it's celebrating the present and uniting and moving forward together as a nation. Um, and we all have ideals and ways that we want to do that. It is a time to reflect on our national journey and, in particular, the ongoing history, traditions and cultures of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and a time to encourage constructive dialogue uh, and about a positive and inclusive future. So I'm now going to introduce to you our 2021 Young Citizen of the Year, Stephanie Evans, to speak. Stephanie, where art thou? Um, thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Dignities, Award re Recipients and Guests. My name is Steph Evans and I was lucky enough to be named Northern Beaches Young Citizen of the Year for 2021 due to my work with my organisation Seas of Change, so it is an honour to be back on this stage to speak to you all in 2022. 2021 was a massive year for me, so I'd like to thank you say thank you to the Northern Beaches Council, the Youth Development Team, and especially Mayor Michael Regan and Councillor Sarah Graddon. Being named Young Citizen of the Year was amazing as it gave me more credibility and ended up opening so many doors for me, including media features, more collaboration opportunities, events, and it was the first in a very long list of awards. Having, Seas of, having started Seas of Change so young, it wasn't about having a list of awards or having titles. It was just so special to have an external body recognise my work and through that enable me to explore new opportunities. I'd also like to say how proud I am to be a part of a local council that truly supports their citizens, young people and the environment. Aside from Seas of Change, I also did my HSC in 2021, so I'd once again like to thank the Northern Beaches Council for all the support they gave the HSC students in such a challenging year. As some of you may know, Seas of Change is not just focused on raising funds and awareness for marine life and their environments. We also aim to empower young people to make a tangible change within their communities through our education programs by helping to mentor and build a community of support around them. The first time I spoke at the Northern Beaches Council was in 2019, where I shared my thoughts on the climate emergency declaration. And I was overjoyed that our local council shared the same values, that they would truly listen to their young people and think about the future of our generation. I'm so looking forward to see our new council continue to work towards net zero so hopefully Australia can reach it before 2050 and avoid the massive ecological and economic disaster. 
To leave you all with a little reminder after the crazy years of 2020 and 2021, to live a life is to learn. Without education and passion, we cannot solve the problems we are and we will be faced with. This room is filled with some of the most passionate people and educators, so please keep doing what you're doing. Also, I'd like to thank, say thank you to the guests in the room tonight. Thank you for supporting all the award recipients. They couldn't do it without you. It is truly a team effort. And to the award recipients, your passion is so clear and your work is amazing. Congratulations on your award. Please keep making the beaches a better place for us all and I wish you all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, it's been great having you um, as one of our award recipients for the last year. And now we're going to begin tonight's award presentations. So as your name is called by either the Mayor or our Deputy Mayor, please come to the stage. You may remove your mask as you get to the stage, if you wish, um, and then you come over here, pick up your certificate or your award from this table in the middle, and you stand right in front of the table and the dignitaries will stand on either side for a photo. There's a photographer right in the middle, so look straight in the middle, don't look down the front, look straight in the middle, because that's where the, all the beautiful photos will be taken. So Mr Mayor, let's get going. Got to love a super spreading event. Too soon. Um, the first five award winners tonight will be presented with a trophy made from a reclaimed red oak timber as well as a certificate. Uh, and I think Kylie just pointed out that I can't hand it to you, our guests can't hand it to you, you've got to pick it up yourself. So, um, and you'll stand in the middle, there's an X on the stage here in the middle. Now, MPs will stand on the other X over there, and I'll stand on that X there, and we'll do our one and a half metres winning. All right, it's my great pleasure to present the very first award tonight, uh, the 2022 or 2022 Northern Beaches Citizen of the Year goes to Bobby Lahan. Lahan. <laughs> Congratulations, Bobby. Can you please come forward and accept your award? Zali, could you please come up and first? Now, a little bit, a little bit about Bobby Lahan. Bobby started the Rock the Pool 2021 Swimathon initiative to raise mental health awareness and much needed funds for Lifeline Northern Beaches. Uh, he completed, this is a lunatic, completed 100 swims in 100 days between January and June 2021. He swam in every ocean rock pool from Yamba to Eden, covering 250 kilometres or the equivalent of swimming the Bass Strait. He also raised more than $100,000 for Lifeline Northern Beaches, helping with the essential services such as the crisis telephone and text lines, which has enabled more than, sorry, enabled another 3,500 crisis calls, which otherwise would not have been possible. Um, I think he's pretty worthy. Bobby? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to get a photo first and we're going to ask him to say a few words. So, photo first. Thank you very much for this award. I, I really am feeling very honoured. Uh, I'd like to thank Deanne uh, from Lifeline Northern Beaches for the nomination and also for, for helping to make Rock the Pool the success that it was. Um, I'd also like to thank my wife and my sons Liam and Fionn who are with me this evening. Um, they were an amazing support, and not, not just moral support, but in terms of the photography, in terms of drone footage, video editing, and in terms of swimming side by side with me in many of, uh, in many of our adventures. Um, I also want to thank Pip and Rochelle, who led our social media campaign. So this was something in order to raise the kind of awareness that I wanted to raise and the funds that we wanted to raise, we needed a fairly significant social media presence, so thanks to Pip and, and to Rochelle. 
And thanks to everybody who donated. I mean, it was an amazing thing. So $100,000 from many, many small donations. So, so thank you very much. Um, I read a newspaper article in, uh, in 2020, and it talked about the ocean pools of New South Wales. And uh, within the first paragraph, it mentioned that there were 100 of them. And I looked at that, and I thought, geez, wouldn't it be great to swim in every single one of them? And that really was the, the beginning of Rock the Pool. So then, um, I'm a late convert to swimming. Um, as a result of my family's participation in the Freshwater Amateur Swim Club that happens at Freshy Rock Pool every Saturday, we're always open for new members. Um, as a result of the family's membership of that, I, I, I became a swimmer. And I am testament to the life-changing impact of regular exercise and regular swimming. Um, and so one of the things that I wanted to achieve through Rock the Pool was to, to really um, create a level of awareness and participation, um, recognizing that swimming and physical exercise is actually really good for, for mental health. So that was, that was the second thing that I wanted to achieve. And then the third thing was really around fundraising. So if you're going to do something as ridiculous as swim in every rock pool in the state, you want to make sure that you're going to make the most of it. Now, my wife, Eresha, is a... Uh, financial counselor for Lifeline Northern Beaches. So I have a unique insight into the amazing work that they do. And, uh, and so partnering with Lifeline Northern Beaches for this was, was, the, logical, um, was the logical choice. It was a great choice, and, uh, and I got tremendous support in, in executing. So now we got everything lined up, so all I need to do is actually execute the plan. It was a bit more difficult with COVID, but, but it was nevertheless, uh, nevertheless achievable. I won't go on for too long, Suffice to say, the ocean and rock pools of New South Wales, and indeed of the northern beaches, are among some of the most spectacular places in the world. Um, they're places of community, places of serenity, places of joy, places of health. And, uh, and I had the privilege of visiting most of them. What a, what a great life. Um, so what I think I would like people here to do tomorrow on Australia Day why not visit your local rock pool and explore the treasure in your very own backyard? Thank you very much and happy Australia Day. The Irish are lunatics, aren't they? <laughs> well done, mate. Fantastic. And uh, hats off. I mean, we won't tell Brad Hazard that you're out swimming in his pools that were you closed or anything. That's all right. It's all good. Your secret's safe with us. Now, the 2022 uh, Northern Beaches, old, I mean, Senior Citizen of the Year is a wonderful recipient, and I'm pleased to announce Terry LaRue. Terry. <laughs> Congratulations, sir. As you come forward, I'm going to ask Jonathan O'Day to step up and stand on the, on the right X, and I'll just read a few bits about young Terry who has played a very significant role in several resident community groups on our northern beaches. Uh, using his very um, big brain, his professional experience and passion for our environment to represent our residents on so many issues. Uh, he's been a community voice on things from the Beaches Link Tunnel to 40 Baskets Tidal Pool Remediation and the Rebuild, the installation of a gross pollutant trap and landscaping at Jackson Street, Balgala, remediation of North Harbour Reserve, the BMX damage that was done to the Baringa Bush Community Garden, preservation of the Clarence Street Bridge and Save the Manly Oval Alliance, but comes with solutions, doesn't? Not an activist and just complains and complains and goes on. Comes to you with genuine solutions, thoughtful uh, ideas about how to solve problems. And for that, we're very grateful. And the community, I like to say about most of the people in this room, don't know how lucky they are to have people like you and like Terry um, raising issues and uh, raising awareness on your behalf. So on that, I'm going to get the photo and then invite Terry to say a few words. But congratulations, mate.
Thank you, Michael, and thank you, dignitaries, and everyone who's, uh, who's here, including my fellow award recipients. Um, as honored and as pleased as I am for the recognition that there comes for myself and others who receive, this, receive an award, the satisfaction I get from the people and the communities that I have helped is in fact greater than the recognition that comes with it because there are so many communities that I've learned and, and, and who have been accepting of the role that I've played to help them. But I think it's interesting for me to talk about how I became involved uh, once I had retired and moved to Balgala. I was incentivized to go to a mainly council meeting because there was concern in the community about a proposal to build a car park under the Oval. So together with a few other residents, I went along and it's quite an intimidating place to be at a, at a council meeting for the first time. But very soon, I and fellow engineers and economists realized that what was being proposed with this oval couldn't be built. And also, if they went ahead and tried to build it, it would effectively have the prospect of bankrupting the council. And my inspiration for continuing to be involved came from an unusual character, David Parsons, because he was there complaining in the way that those of you who know David <laughs> complain. He, um, he complained so uh, vigorously that uh, the rangers couldn't throw him out, the police were called in, and uh, I accompanied David outside and he said to me, well, I heard what you had to say about the project. Welcome to the community of ratbaggish and shit stirrers because that's what you're going to have to be if you want to be effective in the council. And in fact, that was an inspiration to me to be able to, rea to realize that the contribution that I could make was the professional background I had in a, in a, number, of, in a number of areas. And it's what I have brought to, uh, to many communities and most recently to the issue of the Beaches Link Tunnel because it is a tunnel and it's a project that will have long term a really massive impact upon not only the environment around Manly Dam and the environment in the Northern Beaches but on the nature and the character of the place that we've learned to love so much. And so I have continued to play my role and will continue to do so in interacting uh, with the government and with the, the council on this. So I'll still be around for some time. Michael, you can expect me to be there at council meetings. Thank you very much. And you're always welcome. And you accurately described David Parsons very well. That's very good. Councillors down the front row will appreciate that one. All right, so we've had an Irishman and a South African. Let's see what we get next. <laughs> it's got to be Australia Day, right? Almost. Now, our 2022 Northern Beaches Young Citizen of the Year goes to Molly Parker. <laughs> Molly, can you please come forward? Now... I'm going to ask Mr Stokes to um, present this one to you and um, you've seen the drill now so you know what happens. So I'm going to read a bit about you. Molly de has dedicated over 500 hours of her time to surf lifesaving in various roles. In the last 12 months, she's been the vice captain on patrol at North Stain Surf Lifesaving Club. Molly's one of the five female jet ski operators on the Northern Beaches. She's also one of the only female UAV drone operators on the beaches and was the first female IRB rescue boat captain at North Stain Surf Lifesaving Club. Molly also volunteers on the After Hours Callout team and works as a state duty officer at Surf Lifesaving Support Operations Centre where she's in charge of critical incidents and, cor um, and corresponds with the uh, Westpac helicopter. She also liaises with the New South Wales Police, New South Wales Ambulance and Fire and Rescue. What else are we going to do on a weekend, right? Um, Molly, congratulations and we'll just get a photo.
I don't know how I can follow those two speeches, but thank you, Michael. First off, I'd like to thank Northern Beaches Council for putting on another successful Australia Day Awards ceremony. I'm extremely humbled to be awarded the Young Citizen of the Year, and I'd like to acknowledge the other category winners, as well as the other nominations and finalists. I found when, you, when you're doing something you love, you don't really worry about the time that you're taking to do it. I'm thankful to Surf Life Saving for all the opportunities they have given me over the years, especially North Stain Surf Life Saving Club and Surf Life Saving Northern Beaches. Lastly, I would like to thank my parents and my family. The hundreds of hours a year would not be possible without them. Thank you. And thank you, Molly, for your service and keeping us all safe on the beaches uh, to you and your colleagues. Uh, thank you, Molly, and thank you, um, I was going to say David Parsons then, but thank you, Terry, and thank you, Bobby, for, your, um, for all your speeches. We have another award who this gentleman's not here. Um, he is the 2022 Northern Beaches Sports Person of the Year and that is Patrick Wood. So congratulations, Patrick. So I'll quickly read a bit about him. Um, I'll get a photo by myself and um, we'll throw to a video. Now, Patrick was selected to play for the Sydney FC Academy at the age of just 14. In 2020, at 18 years old, he received a scholarship to play with the Sydney FC in the A-League men's team. Patrick now plays as a striker for the Sydney FC A-League men. He received the Under-20s Player of the Year Award in 2021, uh, with the team being grand finalists. He is a proud and honoured member of the 2021 Oli Roos Under-23s Australian team that competed in the Asian Federation Cup qualifiers in Tajikistan. He scored the, um, the goal that secured the Oli Roos a spot in the uh, Asian Federation Cup. He is beyond those sporting achievements, uh, there's a bit more to him. Patrick also gives back and coaches the under 16 firsts, Coleroy Chroma Strikers, uh, and assists with great selections for the club every season. Um, currently, he is the assistant coach for the under 18s also at Coleroy Chroma Strikers. So we'll throw to the video screens about now for a short message from young Patrick. A sincere thank you to the Northern Beaches Council for this award. It is an honour to receive the Sportsman of the Year for 2021. I'm sorry I couldn't be there in person this evening, but I'm in Melbourne for a game. I would just like to take this opportunity to thank all the people who continually support me so that I can pursue my sporting dreams, especially my mum, my dad and my family. It is definitely a team effort. Thank you. You don't have to clean the microphone for that one, Nat. All right, now we have our uh, final major award, which is the 2022 Northern Beaches Community Event of the Year. Now, this is a, an interesting one when I read this uh, and the notes, and it was, uh, I was very pleased uh, as someone who got to watch this on social media a lot and see so the joy it brought through uh, that C word that we've had the last two years and the, the lockdowns. Can I congratulate the Northern Beaches Secret Rocks for Event of the Year? Would Sarah Downs please come forward to accept the award? <laughs> Rob Stokes, you're going to do this one for me, please. Now, if, in case you're wondering what the heck is uh, Northern Beaches Secret Rocks, it encouraged people to paint, drop and hide rocks for other people to find during all their walks during the lockdown. The rocks can be painted by anyone with any design and the finder can keep them or hide them anywhere for others to find. Uh, the activity has minimal environmental impact, is accessible to people of all ages and abilities and is particularly popular with children. My nieces and nephews absolutely loved it, as did the grandparents, mind you. Uh, it provides a unique opportunity for people to be creative, practice mindfulness and stay physically active. The activity creates connection, a sense of community and a reason to keep physically active during the lockdown and, let's face it, beyond the lockdown. Sarah also created a Facebook group and writes daily words of encouragement, bringing joy to its members, which is evident through the posts on the page. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. 
I'm so grateful and happy to be up here receiving this award. Thank you to the Northern Beaches Council for recognizing the, the significance of this event for our community. And thanks to our Mayor, Michael Reagan. The goal for Northern Beaches Secret Rocks was to bring and spread kindness amongst our community through painting and hiding rocks. The community responded in spades through the whole pandemic last year. P rocking became the perfect activity for so many. In fact, our community of members is now over 6,000 people, men, women, and children of all ages. I would like to thank the Northern Beaches community for embracing this concept and really running with it. It really made a big difference to so many. There are several parts to rocking to explain it to you all. Uh, firstly, the act of painting the rock. Um, we have some very imaginative people here on the Northern Beaches. Everything has been painted on a rock from minions to sloths to motivational quotes to just simple words of kindness and hope. All which were very significant to whoever found the rock. And uh, that would only happen after um, some very excellent hiding had taken place from our parks to our walkways, um, everywhere from Manly to Palm Beach, everywhere in between, rocks were hidden and then uh, promptly and hopefully found by people. I, I saw today a post where someone had just found a Santa who'd been waiting almost a month to be found and there he was. Um, so they eventually they will be hidden, will be found by someone. Um, these rocks were hidden with no expectation of thanks. It's a selfless act of random kindness that makes everyone feel good. Especially, I'd like to thank Mar Maria Filaraga for the nom nomination for this award. Our group is so diverse, and Maria and her sons have been so active in the group, painting, hiding, and finding rocks. To quote Maria, it spreads joy, kindness, and happiness when we've all needed some brightness this year. Thank you, Maria. One of so many excellent rockers. And another great supporter has been my cousin Laura. This is a long distance one and I'm the third nation represented up here today. I'm the Canadian. Uh, my cousin Laura, Laura Dawson in Canada, she does not miss a post on, on, our, on our page and she comments and sends positivity from afar. So we've had a lot of uh, sharing of kindness from the world with our group as well. To my family who've put up with all my tales of the rock, as I call them, um, and living with rocks all around our house. Um, I owe you a special thanks. Uh, your support has been my rock. And also, I'm just gonna mention my big dog, Monty, who uh, has, has been my constant companion when our, whenever I'm out hiding rocks. Um, he was really one of the inspirations to get this whole thing started. So you could walk a dog and make someone happy at the same time. Uh, finally, our group will continue rocking on into the future. So if you're looking for a special family activity, that can add some unexpected joy and kindness to the world, please join us at Northern Beaches Secret Rocks. Thanks again, Michael. Rock on, everyone. And thank you, Maria, for, um, for, for nominating, because that's fantastic. When I read that, it was just, it was brilliant. As, somebody, as, as I said, I've got nieces and nephews have really appreciated that, and the grandparents. And I love watching those stories, and it is across the whole of the beaches, whether it's the tens of thousands of people that every week use Narrabeen Lagoon Trail or walk around DY or walk around Lionel Watts or, or anywhere, really. It's just been phenomenal to watch, so um, great recognition. Now, um, to finish, before I hand over to the next um, part of our evening, um, I just want to say there's a great opportunity to start a good story here. Was it an Irishman, a South African, a Canadian, a surf lifesaver and a footballer walk into a bar? <laughs> Just putting it out there. Now, to host our next part of the evening is uh, my very great pleasure to welcome the Deputy Mayor of the Northern Beaches Council, Candy Bingham, uh, who's been a great um, energy and a great part of the Northern Beaches Council and um, I'm looking forward to this next half and listening to your dulcet tones. Candy, over to you. The heels. It's a long way. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Am I on? Great. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Welcome, everybody. Um, this is so special, isn't it? I just love community events, and it's been so long since we've had a chance to actually 
get together and do them. So I really want to acknowledge and thank the staff from the council. What a phenomenal job they do. Thank you so much. In making sure that we can honour our special people tonight. Now my job is there are another 14 people who we really want to acknowledge and thank tonight. And how this is going to work, very similar to how it did with, um, with the first group, is that um, they will come on stage and receive a certificate and a local Indigenous native plant, which you can pick up as you leave um, tonight from the foyer. So let's we'll start off with our first re recipient, who is Ruth Austin. <laughs> now, unfortunately, Ruth is not here tonight, um, so her nominator, Bruce Loudon, will accept the award on behalf of Ruth. Bruce, would you like to come on up? Is Bruce here? Oh, here he comes. Of course he is. I said hello to you earlier. <laughs> so, Bruce, if you'd like to uh, pick up the certificate and then say a few words from the other lectern. It's uh, very unfortunate uh, that uh, Ruth Austin couldn't make it and so uh, she had to attend on this very day a funeral of, in her family in Queensland. So uh, it's upsetting that she couldn't make it but I'm privileged to be asked to be able to uh, present with her, to be with her today to uh, receive the certificate. Ruth is an amazing person. She... Uh, is one in which um, doesn't want to be recognised anywhere. But she's one of those people that does work behind the scenes. And she does things like wraps with love, you know, knit-ins. She does things like Operation Christmas Child, filling up shoeboxes with, uh, with gifts for the Christmas uh, for, for children. And she uh, is so active uh, in volunteering at... Um, operations uh, with uh, Lifeline and with the, the church at St John's in these op shops and uh, she's also Meals on Wheels and she's just about everything in relation to volunteering for the community. So uh, we're very privileged to be able to have a person of uh, such ilk in this uh, wonderful uh, area of us here in the Northern Beaches Council. So. Uh, I just wonder if it's possible, could you put your hands together for this wonderful job of Lisa Austin. <laughs> so thank you very much to the Northern Beaches Council and uh, I thank you, uh, Mr Mayor, and uh, to be pleasant and to share this moment with you and with our distinguished guests and with Candy. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Bruce. <laughs> So in my notes it says that um, Ruth is awarded for 37 years of volunteering with numerous community groups including Harbour Community Library, DY Lifeline Co-op, Freshwater Uniting Church and Meals on Wheels. So you covered them all Bruce, well Covered done. Today, <laughs> yeah, yeah, well done, thank you. <laughs> okay, our next recipient is Paul Cannings. So, Paul, if you'd like to come up and we'll ask uh, Minister Stokes to join you and the Mayor as well for a photograph. So, Paul is awarded for volunteering for the Amateur Beekeepers Association of New South Wales and Permaculture Northern Beaches. Does that mean you're a real honey? <laughs> Whoa, sorry. <laughs> Would you like to say a few words over there, Paul? Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the beautiful Pauline Mueller, who's not here tonight, uh, she's currently in Melbourne, but for nominating uh, me for this award. Um, I'd also like to thank her daughter, Ellen, my partner, 
who has supported me in all the volunteer I work doing in caring for the Northern Beaches, local wildlife um, and flora. So thank you so much for the many dates that we've spent uh, rescuing possums off roads, um, bush turkeys who've almost drowned in toilets, um, and helping to hold the ladder and the ropes while I climb trees and bring down beehives with around 30,000 slightly pissed off honeybees. <laughs> so thank you very much for putting up with those dates and coming along with me. I'd also like to accept this award on behalf of my mother, Susan Cannings, who's at the back, who about, it must have been 24 uh, years or 25 years ago, actually joined up to Sydney Metropolitan Wildlife Service because I was too young at the age of 15 uh, to join so that I could care for the many wildlife that I kept coming at, in contact with who seeked out my help. Uh, there were countless baby possums that Sue raised and other birds that she cared with me. And thank you so much for all that um, time you put in for supporting me as well. I'd also think, like to thank my father, Geoffrey Cannings, is also up the back of the room, who really supported me by providing a really loving and caring home right here in Trenches Forest, about five minutes walk from this beautiful theatre, which also was a beautiful place full of wildlife and nature, which also was a, a supportive and helpful place for the, the many wildlife, the hundreds of animals, birds, lizards, possums, and literally the millions of bees that have used that space um, as a safe, secluded place to care for, where they can, they can recuperate from their, their injuries or illnesses before going back out into the wild. And lastly, I'd like to thank the um, community of Northern Beaches and also the, the councillors and the politicians who have been supportive in kind of making sure that the Northern Beaches remain such a wild, amazing place. I've lived in around, lived and travelled in around 55 countries and I've returned back to the Northern Beaches because there is nowhere else in the world I've seen such a, a vibrant modern city that has so much incredible wildlife living in amongst us. Like where else in the world can you have rainbow parrots that visit your home and if you leave the window open they'll still fruit from your fruit bowl? And where else in the world can you look at sunset why streams of bats with one metre wingspans fly off into the horizon? And where in the world, if you're really lucky, like people here in Davidson, Belrose and Forestville, where in the world can you have an ancient mammal with spikes that lays eggs come into your house or into your backyard and protects your home from termites? There's nowhere else in the world I've seen like that than here in the Northern Beaches. So thank you, Northern Beaches community, the wildlife um, and all the people who've helped support me to protect uh, that wildlife and help this wild child grow up in such a, a beautiful, <laughs> special place. So thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna, I've dedicated my life to environmental education and through the work I'm doing with uh, Department of Education, Taronga Zoo, and the own Northern Beaches Coastal Environment Centre, I'm hoping to inspire and make sure others protect and value and try to re-invite re, re wild, place, wild places back into our urban environments and ensure that not only animals and humans here in the Northern Beaches have a place that they can not only survive, but thrive. So thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. And congratulations too to your family for all the work that you've obviously done for our community as well. Our next recipient, I'd like to offer our congratulations to Sandra Gillett. Sandra is awarded for her work with Cubby House Toy Library over the past 30 years. Cubby House makes play and learning opportunities accessible for children with additional needs. Sandra's work in 2014, leading the drive for Cubby House to come under the early ed um, umbrella, was paramount to saving the closure of Cubby House. And we're wonderful to have it in our area. Congratulations, Sarah. Did you have your photo taken? Did I miss that? Mm -hmm. Yep, good. Okay, great. You are. <laughs> well done. Uh, firstly, thank you to North Beaches Council for conducting these awards as a way to acknowledge only some of the many, many people who work to support our local community. Thank you to Jenny Donahue and Kerry Jenny Donahue and Kerry Dominish from Early Ed for my nomination. 
It's been an unexpected but wonderful honour to be recognised in this way. Cubby House Toy Library has been part of me for almost half my life. During these 30 years, I've had the great pleasure to work alongside hundreds of other community volunteers who also invested their time and expertise to facilitate its ongoing work. And I take this as an acknowledgement of them as well. Cubby House started in 1979 with the vision of two women to provide support to families with children with special needs, Nan Bosler and Pat Freighter. And they also dedicated many, many years to nurture and sustain its operation. Uh, as was mentioned, when Cubby House faced closure in 2014, it was Early Ed who took it under its wing, recognising the valuable contribution it made to the families of the North Beaches and that it was worth preserving. Under their guidance, it has now grown to become accessible to all families in the Northern Beaches and is the only toy library in the northern area of Sydney. It's the community that has kept it alive and it's been exciting to be part of the evolution. Early on, it was recognised that sustainability was one of Cubby House's many values in the recycling and reuse of toys. This sustainability focus has become even more relevant today. The last two years of COVID-19 restrictions have, been, have had their impact on all of us, including the library, but we've been able to adapt and implement strategies that enable us to continue to serve the community at a time when families were desperate to access activities when confined to home. I see a bright future for Cubby House and hope to remain part of it for some time to come, though perhaps not for another 30 years. <laughs> I know we continue to grow, we can continue to grow with the continued support of the community. I'd like to invite anyone who has an interest in children and who would like to volunteer to make contact with us. There's a place for you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. What a wonderful organisation. I'd now like to invite our federal member, Zali Stegel, to come down and join us for the, for the next group of photographs. And call up our next recipient, which is Adam Hennessy. Adam is awarded for founding the North Stain Board Riders Club in 1998 and volunteering as president for the past 25 years, as well as many other roles at Manly Co Rugby League and Surfing New South Wales. Congratulations, Adam. I uh, just want to congratulate everyone else who uh, received the awards tonight and uh, to all, everyone who voted for me, especially Waza Randall who uh, nominated me. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be a part of our community for 30 years. Uh, Founded North Stain Board Riders in 1998 with the help of some uh, local guys who thought there was a need to help young guys in our community. Um, I come from a pretty unique background and uh, I had a pretty tough time when I first started in life and I made a decision when I was about 30 years of age that I was going to dedicate my whole life to giving back to the youth in our community to provide a safe, happy and healthy environment for these guys. I'm actually, to be honest, pretty blessed to have been able to uh, contribute to so many people's lives and I hope over those years I've been able to mentor people and really help our youth as they grow into a very important stage in their life. Uh, I've met many wonderful people, had many great experiences and to be honest, I wish I had another 30 years left because I'd give my whole life to make sure that our next generation are protected and given the right guidance as they move forward in their lives. So this is to all, everyone who I've, I've ever had anything to do with and to the crew who came here today, my partner Ali, uh, former World Tour surfers Richie Lovett and Diane Neve and to the Randalls. Um, I'm the one who should be thanking everyone else for allowing me into their lives. So thank you very much. Thank you, Adam, for your major contribution. And I'm sure you've created lots and lots of young men who will follow in your footsteps. Well, young people, not just men, obviously. Um, now, our next recipient. Our next recipient is David Hickey. Congratulations, David. 
So David is awarded for volunteer work with numerous community organisations, including Lifeline, Manly Warringah Pit Pitwater Community Aid, he's a Justice of the Peace and founder of Manly Dam Memorial Park Remembrance Trust. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Northern Beaches Council for putting this event on. Secondly, to the person that nominated me, Jeff Mackay, who's a um, secretary of the Dam Trust, who really perhaps should be standing up here in my place for the amount of work that he does. Mm -hmm. Volunteering is uh, something that uh, I didn't do until I read the Manly Daily one day and there was an article in there from Lifeline at, at Manly. And Hannah, who was the manager then, required some staff. She said, we can't get any staff. And, so I went down and in three weeks I was serving down in the Manly shop, which I'm, I'm still doing, which is five years later and I, I really enjoy it. So when you, someone says to you do volunteering, it's, you don't get the benefit of it until sometimes when you go home. And you tell your wife, you know, you met a nice lady today whose family lives 15 kilometres from them and never sees them and... You take them out to do their shopping and you buy them a cup of coffee and it's, it's a big deal to them. And I like doing it because it's a big deal to me when I go home. So if any of you are interested in volunteering, life long at Manly, we need you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, David, and thank you for your major contribution. Okay, our next, our next recipient is Andrew Little. <laughs> Congratulations, Andrew. Andrew is awarded for volunteering as president of Belrose Men's Bowling Club for over 10 years and been involved in Northern Beaches and New South Wales governing bodies for bowls. Andrew is also actively involved with Scouting Australia and Belrose Country Club. Congratulations. Andrew. Uh, good evening. Um, I'd just like to um, firstly congratulate all, congratulate all the winners tonight for their awards and also those who made the effort to nominate um, and all the nominees that uh, submitted awards. Um, thank you to my support team, Doug, for nominating me and my reference team and uh, my wife and the supporters over there. Um, also to the Lord Mayor, Deputy Lord Mayor and the councillors for putting on such a, a fine evening tonight to acknowledge the efforts of volunteers. Um, my background was first up with scouting for 60 odd years, mainly in the Linfield area and um, at both uh, a group level and a state level. And after that, um, moving on to the bowling area. Interesting, we had Toby down the front, president of Harbord. And our region's both scouting and, and bowls actually covers the large Northern Beaches area and all five lower councils from the North Shore up to Hornsby. And um, I've been involved in both those areas for a substantial time. Um, from my point, you know, we live in a luck lucky country, we all know that. And um, the culture of volunteers is such an important part of life. So I tend to do what I can for the rest of my life. Thank you for the <laughs> evening. Thank you, Andrew. Now, if you've been following your program diligently, you might have noticed that I've actually skipped somebody. And I do apologise because it's a very important person. So our next recipient, in alphabetical order, you see, 
is uh, Stephen Jensen. Stephen, please come on down. So Stephen is awarded for volunteering with Warringah Art Archers for more than 40 years, as well as his involvement with Archery New South Wales and Archery Australia. Good evening. Part of the brief when I was lucky enough to be nominated for this award and reading the small print was that having a speech at the end was optional. <laughs> so first up, I'd like to thank the Academy for the award tonight. Yes. <laughs> but on a more serious note, first up, it'd be remiss of me not to thank my wife for her support over the last 80 years of me doing what well, it feels like that anyway of being involved in something that I enjoy and I love doing and never really thought about it being a volunteer. And listening to the quality of the people that have come before me tonight, and what underpins it to me is the fact that within our society, we would not be able to exist really without the number of people that volunteer their time in all walks of life to give us a quality of life that we currently have and in we enjoy. And I think with the Northern Beaches Council, by recognising volunteers, just raises the awareness of the people that are out there in the community that do spend a lot of their time for the benefit of other people within the community. And for that, I'd like to thank you very much. So thank you. Thank you, Stephen. So our next Outstanding Community Service Award goes to Judith Malcolm. Now, unfortunately, Judith could not be here tonight, so her sister and nominator, um, Maureen Doyle, will be accepting the award on her behalf. Maureen, can you please come forward? <laughs> so Judy is awarded for 12 years volunteering as coach of Touch Football for New South Wales, an Australian touch and targeted sports Narrabeen Sports High, and as head coach and trainer for Bulgala Surf Lifesaving Club for over 10 years. Thank you, and thank you, Michael and Candy and Rob and Zali and Jonathan and all the councillors, and congratulations to all the award recipients. It gives me great, a great honour to represent Judy in receiving this award. She can't be here, sadly, because she has just undertaken serious neurosurgery. Um, and so this is really special mm -hmm. for her. We come from a very long line of Northern Beaches volunteers. Our family has lived on the Northern Beaches for over 120 years. And all my great-grandparents, my grandparents and parents have all been involved in surf lifesaving, swimming, DY Swimming Club. And now we carry on that legacy, and very proudly so. And Judy has nurtured thousands of the young people in our community on the Northern Beaches. She has taught them many valuable lessons about working as a team in all the sports she has coached, she is a valuable role model, both on and off the field. She represented Australia in touch football. She represented New South Wales Opens in netball. And she carried that on to, to bring the best out of every child she has ever worked with for decades and decades. And in the, in the uh, pool of people that have been here tonight from our United Nations, um, <laughs> I'm married to an Irishman, 
And I know Bobby, he would be so impressed that an Irishman undertook swimming, of all things. <laughs> it's not one of their fortes. <laughs> So um, Judy really is a deserving recipient and we are so very, very proud of everything she has achieved. But more importantly, we're very proud of what she has done to bring out the best in all the children on the northern beaches for many decades. Thank you. Thank you, Laurie. Please pass on our best wishes to Judith. Our next recipient um, is a late apology, and that's Mike Pawley. So Mike is awarded for dedicating his spare time to running cricket coaching clinics for kids and for donating sporting goods and financial assistance to the local sporting associations and schools. And we'll make sure that his uh, certificate and plant gets to him. So congratulations to Mike Pawley. Okay, next up is Frank Pickard. And I'm going to ask um, Jonathan, Jonathan O'Day to please be part of the official photographs with Frank. So Frank is awarded for his dedication as teacher and principal for over 45 years at various local high schools and advocating that girls can do anything. And for his commitment to Indigenous awareness, ensuring an appreciation of Aboriginal experience is in the curri curriculum. Thank you so much, Frank, and congratulations. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to Michael and the Northern Beaches Council. I'm extremely honoured to receive this award. Um, I got a telegram 47 seven years ago to uh, attend Narrabeen Girls High School. It was my first teaching appointment. And uh, I was from the um, uh, Fairfield, Cabramatta Fairfield area, the western suburbs of Sydney. So it was uh, quite an adventure to go to, to Narrabeen and start my teaching career. I wasn't very good, but uh, I certainly loved the experience. And uh, the, the, the Northern Beaches was just a blessing to me. Um, I managed to spend the 47 years of my career not going over either the Spit or the Roseville Bridge, uh, which again has been a blessing. Um, it's been wonderful to be a teacher at Narrabeen then to move to a head teacher role at McKellar Girls, a deputy principal and principal role at Balgala Boys, and then uh, ultimately finished my career as a principal at Freshwater Senior Campus. So it's been a, it's been a magnificent um, journey for me. Um, I've uh, had, an op had opportunities to do pretty well every job in the teaching system, you know, from um, sports coordinator to year advisor to working with uh, the Biola Hostel, the uh, Aboriginal uh, Girls Hostel up at Alambi when I was at McKellar Girls and, um, and my various roles in, in teaching. Um, I think that uh, I, I would really uh, like to focus on all the Northern Beaches uh, public schools, particularly secondary schools. Um, I think that what I've seen in the time that I've been in this area has been the evolution of a magnificent public education system that at one stage, quite frankly, in the, in the 90s looked like it was dying and going the way of the eastern suburbs where many public schools closed. But through the really dedicated and hard work of teachers and, and school leaders, particularly my, particularly my school leader colleagues, um, what, happened, what happened was an evolution that turned what many th thought was an educational backwater into a magnificent educational community. And that educational community has just continued to prosper through the work of, as I said, of those magnificent teachers and school leaders. Um, Rob Stokes was the Minister for Education there for a period of time, and I'm sure would agree with me that the, the Northern Beaches Secondary College and the, and the Pittwater Community of Schools have been all, uh, community groups that have absolutely led the revolution in teaching and revolution in educational outcomes in this area. Um, I just wanted to point out to you that we have, we have 10 high schools in the Northern Beaches, ranging from Baron Joey in the, in the north to Davidson up in the west and, and, and Balgala Boys Campus in the, in the south. And seven of those 10 high schools in 2020 were in the top 20 comprehensive high schools in New South Wales in terms of HSC results. So that's a magnificent yeah. outcome. Um, could I thank my old mate, my schoolmate Terry Rooney, who is a proud Northern Beaches re resident at Narrabeen now, who nominated me. Quite a, it was quite a surprise to me when I got the phone call 
Terry and I go back. We, we went to school at Fairfield Patrician Brothers way back when. Um, could I thank my wife, Loretta, and my boys, um, Alex and Christian, who are here with me tonight. They've been incredibly supportive of me during my entire career. It's been, um, it's been an absolute pleasure to work and live in this area. Um, as, as many of the speakers have said, we are blessed to be in the Northern Beaches. It's magnificent. Um, could I also congratulate all the previous winners? I feel quite humbled. Don't really think I should be here when I listen to the rest of you. You're, um, you're, in, you're incredible. So thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you, Frank, and congratulations. So our next Outstanding Community Service Award goes to Katrina Robinson. Katrina is awarded as founder of Every Little Bit Helps, which she set up in 2013. Every Little Bit Helps collects and distributes over 70,000 personal hygiene care packs to the homeless, victims of domestic violence, asylum seekers, community centres and at-risk youth across Australia. Congratulations, Katrina. Good evening. I'm not one to seek out the limelight, which is ironic, given the light shining on me right now. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for this nomination, award and recognition, and congratulations to the other award recipients here tonight. There are so many p amazing people in this community who do so much for so many. I see you, I respect you, and I thank you. It has been said that there is no greater joy than the joy of giving, and for me, that couldn't be truer. I've never been homeless, and I've never been a victim of domestic violence, but I've also never walked past a victim of a homeless person without wanting to help. And that is what led me to establish Every Little Bit Helps. Over the last seven and a half years, we've been able to create and distribute more than 70,000 personal hygiene care packs that are made up of don donated hotel toiletries. And if by what we do, we can ease the burden of our most vulnerable Australians, then our mission has been accomplished. This isn't just my award. This is an award in recognition of the hundreds, if not thousands, of individual and corporate volunteers who have denoted both their time and their products in support of Every Little Bit Helps. We are proud to be a 100% volunteer-run organisation. As I've often said, I'm just the bus driver. Without passengers, there is no point in embarking on the journey. I am so glad I pulled out from the curb back in 2004, as the journey has been so fulfilling. Thank you to everyone who continues to support and volunteer. Thank you to my beautiful friend for this nomination and to my family and friends who continue to support me in so many ways. If you would like to get involved and support Every Little Bit Helps, you can find our donation bins locally at Balgala, Belrose, Brookvale, Forestville, Manly, Mona Vale, Newport and Worrywood. Please seek them out. Please offer support. Lastly, I would like to dedicate this award to the 116,000 Australians who are currently homeless. Let's ensure we continue to shine the light on them and their needs. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. Very inspiring. So our next recipient is uh, Jessica Twells. Now, <laughs> Jessica is just going to come up and have her photograph taken. And while she does, um, Jessica is awarded for volunteering as a junior leader with Eleonora Girls Guides for four years, as well as teaching other guides Auslad, which is the Australian Sign Language. Jessica also recently received the Queen's Guide Award, the highest attainable award for members of Girl Guiding. Congratulations, Jessica. <laughs> So we're coming towards the end and we've got two more outstanding awards to give. 
The next one is to Sonan Wangno. Is that correct? Sonan Wangmo. Please come down, Sonan. So Sonan is awarded for, for the 24 years she has been a volunteer and community support person for the Tibetan community on the northern beaches, helping them find employment and giving guidance to those who have survived trauma and suffering. dignitaries and fellow award recipients and guests. Um, I would like to begin by paying my respect to the First Nation people of this land where we have gathered this evening. I would like to pay my respect to the elders past, present, and emerging with my hand. I wish to thank the Northern Beaches Council Australia the Award Organizer for the award which I was pretty surprised and very proud and honored to receive. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our spiritual leader, His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, for his teaching on nonviolence, from which we did Tibetans gain knowledge and peace and compassion, and we do our best to practice that in our daily life. I thank my parents, who are my first guru, for always guiding me in the right direction. I thank my family, my husband, and my two lovely daughters there for their support throughout my journey. I thank my past community leader, Sering Dorjila, who's here with us with his wife, and my nominator, Ngawang family. Thank you so much for your support. I just want to share a little bit about me. I'm from a Tibetan refugee family, born and raised in India. I'm grateful to India and Australia for supporting the Tibetan refugees. I've been lucky to work with Tibetan community in Australia for many years. I've been able to help people in my community in all sorts of ways, connecting them with support and that they needed to settle into life in Australia. I believe that community work is not just about giving, but also about what we gain when we do that work. I've gained so much from from the paid and unpaid work. People in Tibetan Sydney community have taught me so much about what it is to suffer, lost one's place, identity, and culture, as well as what we need to keep heading towards a bright future and held our heads high. We have shared our trauma and strength, and this sharing and learning has helped me personally in many important ways. I also want to thank all the service providers in the Northern Beaches area who I have worked with for many years, who have helped me learn that my skills as a helper are also my professional skills. Lastly, I would like to thank my colleagues at Starts, who is affiliated under New South Wales Health, and its community service team for the professional support and encouragement that they've always given to me. Being able to bring my personal and professional skill together in this way has been very important for my happy life in Australia. I hope that every Tibetan today hearing this and watching this will feel encouraged and inspired by the recognition that this award has given not only to me, but for my community. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sonan. So the final Outstanding Community Service Award goes to Elliot Williams. So Elliot is awarded for his volunteer work with St John Ambulance for over 22 years, 
dedicating in excess of 100,000, sorry, not 100,000, that's an awful lot, <laughs> not old enough, are you? 10,000, which is still a lot, 10,000 hours of service and outstanding leadership during the recent bushfires, floods and COVID-19 pandemic. He's also an intensive care nurse at Royal North Shore Hospital. Congratulations, Elliot. Thanks very much, uh, Deputy Mayor, and thanks uh, just to everyone for coming and, and sharing this uh, tonight. My job is just to be very brief because I'm the last person so everyone can get out of here. Uh, but I, I just wanted to say uh, what a privilege it is to be able to serve the community through St John. It's a wonderful organisation I've been part of for a very long time uh, and certainly has uh, you know, a very special place in, in my heart and in my life. Uh, it'd be remiss of me just not to say thanks to uh, my wife and kids who have to put up with, you know, me being fairly busy with work and then having, uh, you know, a lot of reasonable commitments with St John and, and other things. So uh, they, they've got to, uh, you know, obviously uh, have some of that sacrifice in family time as well. But uh, I, I just, you know, really appreciate the opportunity to be able to keep doing this. Uh, and thanks as well to Ilan, uh, our commissioner, who's here tonight, uh, who was the person who nominated me. So uh, that's all I'll say. Enjoy the rest of your night and thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. thank you, Elliot. Well, what an extraordinary um, commitment and wonderful, wonderful recipients that we've seen tonight. Thank you so much all. And for everybody who nominated you, what an amazing community we have. Mr. Mayor, it's now back over to you. Thank you, Candy. Great job as usual. And to pick up what you were saying and, and others have said tonight, what, how lucky are we to have you all in the room and, and contributing what you do and, and for us and, and our community at large. So uh, I say to the new councils in particular that um, as, a, as a politician, you think you know a lot about your community and then you get to hear about what else is happening when you come to award ceremonies like this or you get to meet others in the community. And it's an extraordinary privilege and an extraordinary thing to hear and see and celebrate and thank um, all those in the room. And so a sincere, again, thank you to all of you. As it's noted, your contributions don't go unrecognised and I want to say a sincere thank you to, to Rob, Zali and Jonathan for giving up your evening and giving um, the awards an, an extra special um, bit of credibility and, and, and respectability in terms of having your presence here. We know how incredibly busy you all are, the job that you're all doing for us um, in the current pandemic and for everybody. So I just want to say on behalf of the, those here tonight and on behalf of a very grateful community, thank you for your service. Um, can I say thank you to the, um, to the judges? Uh, it's, a, it's a big deal what you've had to do and, and look at what you've, uh, look at tonight and, and what you had to, what the, the nomination forms you've gone through and, and the worthiness and, uh, and there is so many more that we could award as well. So it's a big deal to do what you did, to read those nominations and put those forward. So thank you so much to all those judges, particularly those who, tonight. Um, so the final formalities uh, are relatively simple before I get and, and introduce the national anthem. So I can see Karen waiting in the wings there, because uh, we're not allowed to sing the national anthem. Um, but the outstanding, com the conclusion um, of the national anthem uh, will ask each of the award recipients to make their way out to the media wall at the back of the foyer and follow the direction of the staff to grab an individual photo. Um, if you would be so kind, that would be great. Um, Outstanding Community Service Award recipients, please remember to collect your plant um, from where you have your photo taken in the foyer. Um, and for the families and friends, please exit the theatre and wait for the award recipients outside um, so we don't create a super spreader event and I don't have Brad Hazard having a crack at me. Have you ever, ha have you ever had angry Brad? We all have, haven't we? It's an interesting, interesting experience. Um, and on that... Happy note, thank you for having all of us councillors. Thank you for your time tonight. It is very much appreciated and giving up your family time as well to celebrate and, um, and connect with our extraordinary um, humans and community service um, in, this, in this room tonight. So thank you and Karen to the stage to sing the national anthem and none of you sing. <laughs> We're not, and you don't want to hear me sing, that's for sure. So Karen for the national anthem. And I'll stand as far away from here as possible. Australians, oh, let us rejoice, for we are young and few. With golden sun, wealth, a toll, our holy 
Thank you, one and all, Kylie, to finish and finalise? No? <laughs> Say, just to say <laughs> thank you, everyone, for attending tonight. If I can just ask you all to slowly and respectfully make your way outside and the recipients will stay inside in the foyer for a photo. Unfortunately, our COVID-safe environment doesn't allow for a cocktail party tonight, but hopefully you can have one at home. Thank you very much for coming. See you in